Yeah. Okay. So this is Francisco. This is the crisis help show where spotlight tonight is on Valerie David, who has a one person show called the pink Hulk mm -hmm. that has toured around the world really. And, um, and we're going to talk to her tonight for about 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes. And then we have two other guests who are joining us to ask some questions of Valerie and talk to her and join in on the conversation. And they are Anthony Valbiro and Jennifer Ricci. And so I just want to go to Valerie first. Valerie, this is such, you behind you I see laying on your couch, I guess that is. <laughs> yes, uh, it's taped it, to my couch. Taped to your couch. That's with, the poster uh, called The Pink Hulk. With scotch tape. <laughs> with duct tape holding it together. With, uh, <laughs> with the ribbon, right? The pink ribbon, right? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned to me, because we were talking about different actors, and so you mentioned to me your connection to Mark Ruffalo and his the, being the Green Hulk, and you're the Pink Hulk, and you told him about that, right? And stuff. Yes. And... Tell me a little bit more about that. Tell us a little sure. bit more about that. Well, first that. off, thank you so much for having me on here. It is quite an honor. And um, the the name, the Pink Hulk, came from the correspondence I had with Mark. Uh, I was diagnosed with lymphoma in 1998. And then fast forward 2014, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And I, I was so upset, but I was also so angry because I'm like, cancer again? And a different kind. So I was so angry. I emailed him at like, like one, almost one o'clock in the morning. And I said, you know, Mark, I'm so mad. I have cancer again. Um, you know, I, I could be the Hulk, but your pink counterpart. But I had <laughs> no idea that it was going to morph into this show. Wow. And the interesting part about the name, the Greek, the pink Hulk is that we all know that breast cancer's ribbon is pink. However, lymphoma's ribbon is green like the lime green of the the green hulk so it is a most fitting title for the show um, it represents breast cancer and then non-hodgkin's lymphoma which i had and then in 2018 i hulked out again because i was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer yeah you and, know you got to be tested you can't just be tested twice you got to be tested yeah third yeah three time, times right? four. To make it really hold you know <laughs> exactly what well, so between 2008 the first cancer and 2014 in that conversation with mark you, you were you developing the show or an idea for the oh, show sure. or so what happened so it was 1998 and then 2014 and then i decided you know it's just i felt like i had um excuse me something to say because i had two different cancers at two different times of my life um a cancer lymphoma which is both men and women, and then breast cancer, which is still men, there's still a percentage, but mostly a female cancer. Right. And I felt between the two cancers, I definitely had something to say. So the, so I didn't, so when I was diagnosed and um, it was August 16th of 2014, you never forget those dates. Right. And uh, so I was in treatment uh, over the course of eight months with uh, a lumpectomy and uh, chemo and radiation. And then I finished my last radiation treatment, February 27th, 2015. And then I uh, started writing The Pink Hulk uh, in November of that same year um, when I was with my family in, uh, in Maryland at the time uh, at Thanksgiving. And at that point, I ha was on a scooter because I had a foot injury that I had to ignore the, those last eight months because okay. I didn't fish to fry. So finally, I, ha I, was, I had an air cast and I had a scooter. So I was uh, for a few months. So it l left me a bit sedentary. And so I started writing The Pink Hulk in November of 2015. And it was a full production by June of 2016 so from Ooh. page Day. Wow, that's great! Wow. So you were, you were working almost feverishly on it, right? Feverishly. It was like it was like, but thank goodness that I healed from the foot right. injury. Mm -hmm. um, but I just felt like it, it. I couldn't stop. It was almost. It was just. It it came out, and I. Well, I yeah. 
who did you have in mind as you were writing it? Was it for self-healing or do you, did you have like unnamed faces of people who had cancer in mind or did you like call back to sitting in a waiting room and seeing like lots of women that, what, like what, what was propelling you to write it? I mean, I yeah. understand that, but what, what was the main? The main book? goal. Well, I, it's interesting. That's a great question. What had propelled this was that I felt like I really wanted to help people. I, I know that cancer is scary and, and it is something that I hope no one ever has to face. And I wanted people to have hope that even if they have cancer, that they can still, they can still fight back and find that inner superhero inside ourselves to fight back any adversity in life. So my original goal was to help people and to give them hope. And, and say there is light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. The irony is that the Hulk story actually helped me and helped save my life because uh, I was diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer the day the show was opening in Portland, Oregon in October of 2018. Wow. And I performed the show that night and I wow. didn't let anything stop me. And it ended up this my own show, and I kept performing it even with this diagnosis, um, saying, you know, it was my own story helped me, and uh, with my cancer for the third time and a much more serious cancer because it was metastatic, and then I now have no evidence of disease from great doctors and medications that I'm on, but I feel psychologically. The Pink Hulk actually, I'm getting for Clemp, um, yeah. actually Clemps helped me. Everybody. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah. Talk amongst yourselves. Um, uh, <laughs> help me. Yeah, Linda Richmond from SNL um, helped me uh, survive. And so it, I feel like the story is even more important now because I had cancer three times survived very serious cancers and especially now with what's happening in the world and what we're faced with right now we need hope and i want to help bring that hope to people and to say never give up never give up hope and i want to have my pink hulk message empower people to say you know i'm gonna find that inner superhero inside myself and help fight it and no matter what it is, if it's cancer or if it's exactly. some other illness or if exactly. it's the loss of a loved one or whatever is got you really against the wall. Exactly. And that's why I feel the, the story is really connecting with people universally because universally, cause it's not about cancer. You know, it's, if you're not in a happy relationship, it, you have the power to change your life and to have the power to say, this is the way I want to live my life and on my terms. Right. And I think that's and, really important for all of us in any situation we're faced. And Valerie, although I haven't seen the show, I've read, you know, you've gotten so many awards. I've read several of the reviews and the coverage and stuff. But yet I know that you're not standing up there with a tablet going through the, the different milestones of cancer and stuff. It's a very entertaining, right? Show yeah. filled with it's funny. humor. And it's funny. Is it, it's funny. Does it, do you have, do you play other characters in it or? Yes, I do. I play uh, a lot of characters, especially my favorite being my mother, Rhoda David, and my father, David David. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yes, it is true. My father's name is David David. Um, oh, and, really? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, and I I'll highlight that in my show. But I play many different characters with all the people in my life that have been part of that story. My doctors, mm -hmm. uh, my friends, my family. Um, so, they're so they're all on stage inside you. They're all on stage with you. And they've gone from, name some of the places that you've brought this show. Oh, I've, 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 some of the my, countries or whatever, some of the places. Or, my favorites, uh, I, I, I loved all the places. Um, some of the, my favorites have been Sweden and, um, I wow. love Sweden, uh, in Gothenburg and, uh, Fringe Festival. 
uh, shout out to Isabella, Isabel and uh, Chris and, and Adam from the Stockholm French Festival and, and, the, and Finland. And then I'm doing a virtual show, uh, parts of the show in Iceland at the uh, Reykjavik Fringe. Wow. Um, so I'm so very cool. excited. And shout that out is to fantastic. Them. Very cool. So, yeah, I, I'm, even through all that's going on in the world, the Pink Hulk is still, is still happening. And the Pink and, Hulk is in international spirit, right? And yes. Human. Yes. Yes, not and necessarily I, and it's, American, right? Human. Right, right, and it's funny because the characters, for better or for worse, I play them. Um, I I play this one guy who um, my story is uh, trying to find love through all of this. Uh, uh, um, a cancer diagnosis means one thing, you know, time to find a man. <laughs> and one of the characters <laughs> was a guy that I actually um uh, had uh briefly dated and i portray him because i had when I, I thought i was going to have a mastectomy and it ended up being a lumpectomy and i was so afraid of my womanhood being robbed and, right. and breast cancer that i had called him up and i was like oh uh do you, you know, uh, are you free this evening kind of thing? And I portrayed him and he came to see the show and, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and his face was like, because <laughs> I portrayed him kind of nerdy. Wow, a bit. And so, uh, <laughs> a, a lovable nerd. So I mean, we're still very good friends, but I think his, at first he got a little sticker shock, like, that's what you think of me, you know. Right, but right. but it, you know, we know in theater things are heightened. So it it was <laughs> it was a caricature of him. It wasn't him, but it was very funny. But I'll never forget his face, you know. And I was like, uh oh, I'm in must, trouble. It must have a major effect on people in the audience, right? Do you, do you get like fan mail or emails or uh, yes, I like actually that, get or comments yeah. on Facebook. And yes, yes. yes I I've gotten gifts, um, gifts, uh, gifts. Uh, um, I, after the show, um, someone had given me the bracelet off of their wrist and like, I want you to have this. Wow. I got a ring. I mean, the gifts are beautiful and I incorporate them in my show. I actually wear that jewelry that I've gotten. And as well as I got a beautiful handmade quilt that was given to me as a gift that's in the show that I put on the table with the props. Um, I have pink sunglasses. I, I simulate a scene uh, in Aruba uh, um, where the show starts and someone gave me pink sunglasses right out of their bag and this, <laughs> really? uh, and so <laughs> I, put, I wear the no sunglasses now, yeah, um, and they're in the show. So everybody who's given me a gift, it's part of the show and I'm so honored. And then someone even, I simulate a bike marathon and that's the other thing that I wanted to say that when I finished treatment February 27th, uh, May 3rd of that, like two months or uh, February, March, like a little over three months later or less than three months, I did a 40 mile bike marathon after I finished treatment with uh, chemo and oh, surgery wow. and radiation. Wow. And That's to say, great. I'm not going to let it stop me. And I was in Vermont at the one and only series, uh, Monica Callen's uh, wonderful solo show festival. and. A, a guy who's a cyclist gave me a little green bike. Uh, I, I have to see if I can find it. Uh, I think it's somewhere. If I can find it, it's somewhere here. But yeah, so um, uh, just these wonderful gifts that that they're, they're such gifts that I've gotten from people that I'm very grateful and emails and things saying thank you. And that even so um, wonderful. The husband. You have three new fans right here. Like it's oh my god! Yeah. Now I, I I want to turn this over to Anthony and Jen. Now if if it turns out that this automatically times out, which I hope it doesn't, at five thirty, then I'm going to sign you all back in so we can complete. Okay. okay. Thank you. So we'll do another ten minutes. But uh, you know, let me let's let's let actually let's let Jen go first. If yes, because Jen. Okay. I mean, okay. not in being in theater and uh, you, 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 you do it, you know? Okay. Like I totally relate with you doing the bike marathon after finishing treatment because, um, the thing I did after treatment and Anthony, you, you were the director of it was I auditioned and, and played a pretty big role in a show. Cause I wow. had to, yes. prove to myself that I could get up and f still do it after going through all of that hell, you know? Yes, and congratulations for being a survivor, and thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thanks, well. thanks. My question for you is like, um, 
the shock, like that shock of getting a cancer diagnosis, like for me, I got that feeling of just like being beaten down, like what the hell life, you know, like what's going on. And then like this inner warrior, like emerges and you're just like, you know what, damn it. I'm going to fight like hell and cause I want to live my life and go on. I don't want to have to deal with this shit. And somehow like, I felt like I wanted to share my story with other people. Like, did you feel like that the whole time or did that evolve did. over time? Like, with you? It did. Well, of course. And you know, you can totally relate. It's, it's devastating. You know, yeah. you, you, you know, it, it's, it's the one of the worst things you could ever hear in your life, mm -hmm. but it's our choice, how we react to it. And oh, it's absolutely. our choice, how we deal with it. So of course it was, it was devastating and, you know, I'm not going to sugarcoat. Oh yeah. I, the pink Hulk was always there. You know, um, it, the pink Hulk had to evolve. And so once you get that shock and devastation, you're absolutely right. And warrior is a, the great word. And I think we should not say cancer survivors. We should say cancer warriors because we oh, are exactly. warriors. We are, we are battling a war. And so I think that I, I've always had a, you know, a fighting spirit. And, and I think too, you know, I, I, my grandmother had Hodgkin's and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and she survived many years. Um, she was a huge influence escaped um, Iraq in 1941 with my family. They're mm -hmm. survivors of, 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 um, of a very difficult time. And my father is also going through and we're fighting together uh, his prostate cancer he's had. So I feel like my family was a huge source. And I remember I have a cousin and he was, when I told him what happened, he said, you know, Valerie, think of what your family went through to get to America and think of, of the fight they had to do to survive. He think of the stock you have come from yeah, and, totally. and the legacy of my family and what fighting spirit they had, I feel lived on in me to help me survive. And I credit a lot of that to my family and thanking them for their fighting mm -hmm. spirit that gave me the fighting spirit to keep going. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's like, you're like, it's like, I'll show you. And I remember exactly. yeah. <laughs> when I had an audition um, on a Sunday and I had my lumpectomy on a Friday, I was like, I'm going to audition. <laughs> you know? And I did. And I had bandages yeah. and everything. I didn't get the part, yeah. but I didn't care. <laughs> you know, yeah. I was not yeah. letting that audition stop me. That's funny because I did the same thing again, Anthony, when I auditioned to be Gucci and Mame. Yes. I was wearing the breast binder and everything. And I still oh went up there and did it because I was like, God damn it, nothing's stopping me. And sorry. And you got the part, right? No, I did it because I found out I had to have chemo. That yeah. was like between but, the surgery but Jen and Jen was the there. Surgery. Jen was kind of, I was in uh the ma the musical right, name were. with them. Yeah. And uh Jen, I was every night I was like you know, you would maybe not there a couple of nights, but every night she was there, I was saying, oh, this is so wonderful. This is so fantastic. And of course, this is what keeps you going, you know? Yeah, yeah definitely. Definitely. You know? definitely. Yeah. And that is so great, Jen. And what, good we're going to, well, I'm going to have to, this is unfortunately, okay, I, this the only time I ever set this up with a thing, but I'm going to sit, I'm going to email you again. We're going to come okay. back into the show in case it disappears in about 30 seconds. Because then I want to start off with Anthony, and we we'll want to go another five or ten minutes. Okay. You got it. We'll do it. Okay. All right. Thank you. And then Thank I'll, you so, so much. I'll, take it. I'll uh, but let let's see. Maybe it'll just go through it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we'll keep going. Line yeah. won't even be noticed somehow. Exactly. So Anthony, let's, maybe um, Jen, did you want to? Did you want like your family was so helpful and supportive also? in this right yeah they were they were and and like you i had um you know my family didn't come from europe or the middle east or anything but my grandmother and all of her siblings had some form of cancer wow. so i grew up seeing like my aunts go through breast cancer live for 20 years afterwards and stuff you know my grandmother didn't have such a great experience but i knew like after you get through that like shock and devastation of everything, you know that you have to fight like to continue what 
they were fighting too, you know? So yeah, totally identify with that. And I think that it's amazing that you've been through that three times and your attitude is like fantastic. Thank you. I wish and we weren't quarantined. I'd like to have a cup of coffee with you. Me too. Actually, right. we'll have a virtual a cup. You will. <laughs> you will. We will. And we'll yeah. get to, we'll get together in some way. We're all gonna see your show. I know it. Yes. 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 Absolutely. And now, yes. and Anthony has. We had talked about it a little bit, but well, like one of Anthony's shows is this Pressure Makes Diamonds, and I'll never forget the first time I saw it which was about 15 years ago, probably. My Maronick Library. In, no, but even before that, I think it was in Yonkers. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yeah, <laughs> that was, and I was so, yeah. I had my video camera. I videotaped it. I didn't even you know. saw it on Friday the 13th, 2006. <laughs> it was a very <laughs> lucky day. Because oh, wow. he was, yep. your family was from Eastern Europe. Our families were from Italy, you know? And so, all of the characters in his play, his personal life, were, were my was my family, you know? <laughs> and I absolutely loved it. So here I am, everyone else is enjoying it, laughing, clapping, and there I am crying my eyes out. <laughs> I, I needed it so much in my life at that time to see his, at that time it was called A Lady of Familia. And that's like what each of us, or Ed, especially you, are, with our art, you know, is for not only ourselves, like you said, but for other people. We represent the, the hope of tomorrow, you know, or what else there is, you know, when, when everything else is questioned. And mm -hmm. Anthony, I think it's probably 12 or 13 characters that he can- 16. 16, wow. he can bring them into being, you, you say what you do, he becomes his uh, uh, anti, uh, anti My grandmother, my Aunt Mary. <laughs> I've even created a character that embodies anxiety, yes. and her name is Anti Anxiety. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, oh, but right. what I have to say, which is interesting, is in the beginning part of my show, and it goes back to a friend of mine, Noel Hart who lost his son at five years old. And I was coming out at 44, and I was suicidal for two years. And I remember telling Noel, Noel, uh, you know, my sister, who was not sympathetic at that time, is saying, he, he should really want, look at Noel, that's somebody who has problems, not him. And Noel, looked me flat in my eyes and he said, everybody has their own black hole. Mm -hmm. Whether you are coming out, whether you've lost a child, getting cancer, whatever it is, I have never experienced what you two ladies have experienced and my, you, I put you both on such pedestals with such love and such devotion to your incredible strength and, and courage, but whatever I've been through or Fran's been through, that is our black hole. Exactly. And the Nothing one thread validates anybody else's things. And the thread is laughter. Mm -hmm. It is. The thread is it's laughter. Cool. And it's also laughter. The silver, and laughter. the silver lining, because I don't, I, I can't believe that life is life without maybe not black, but at least gray hole. You know what I mean? That there has to be lows so that we know when there are high times. And in your case, for your play, you actually changed the name of it to Pressure Makes Diamonds, yes. which really says it. it it's the pr what your uncle had told you, right? Pressure Makes Diamonds. No, it, and actually a mafia chieftain a mafia. who was not even a real mafia person <laughs> who was constantly telling me to keep on going with all the bull stuff that he was sending me. And he would keep on saying, pressure makes diamonds, kid. Pressure yeah. makes diamonds. And for years, it's the idea of the negative. The things that have been said to you sometimes that come across as negative, you think they're negative. Like when my Aunt Mary said, Anthony, nobody 
There's a world outside. She wasn't saying I was nobody. She was saying, get up, go yeah. outside, right. live your life. Right. And I think we have to learn to look at something and flip it. And you two right. ladies have certainly done that. Yeah, you sure have. And, with, and you, know, you as well, it's you as yeah. well, Anthony. I mean, that's I think amazing. When everyone shares their personal stories, you help that person who's stuck in their hole it's like you're reaching in and they're and pulling them up little by little every time they hear something absolutely else's and, perspective, and you some, know? sometimes it's going back in your own life like i've been lucky very lucky in the last many years but at one point i was hit over the head with a bat my head was yeah. fractured in 14 wow. places and my wife was told I had only a 50% chance to live. And if oh I lived, I'd be a vegetable. And then slowly but surely, I, I inched it back. But in the, in the depths of it, I really thought I, that was it. I was going to die, you know? And so now, with all those years going by, it's become just a dim memory. But it's good to, to I mean, not bring back bad stuff but it's good to remember your own inner strength and a mm -hmm. show like yours and yours and yours helps people do that you know what I mean yes. so so uh even if it's that uh, someone who has been through cancer already 20 years ago or less like Jen she sees your show it reminds her of her own passion and her own, right? Mm -hmm. Reminds oh, you of your own resilience and your own. And yeah. so uh, it has a, a very important element of strength for even people who have gone through, which many of us have gone through some kind of challenge or whatever. We're, we're each other's reminder. mirrors. Yeah, yeah and we're right. each other's mirrors. Yeah. yeah, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah that is. Mirrors. That is great. Very yeah. good. So now, and, how do we see, now we can't see it in the live yet, you know? Yeah, is there any video footage for us to yes, see? I, I have um, I, uh, video footage on, I have my website, um, pinkholdplay.com, okay. my email, pinkholdplay at gmail.com. I'm on Facebook at Pink Hulk Play. I'm on Twitter at Pink Hulk Play. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sort of started instagram kind of i think uh i i right. joined something on the bandwagon and that's pink hulk play so everything is pink hulk play here's the poster uh and the uh logo uh, rebecca Kalant uh designed the logo um so i'm hoping you know we're like i'm going to be doing things virtually i'm not we're all trying to navigate that whole right. live stream thing yeah is it you know, I want to mention. I want to just mention this about the the virtual, just to keep it in mind. Anthony is an unbelievable set designer, also, and in the virtual space, I, I know a lot of people are doing readings. We're talking about it a lot and stuff. Mm -hmm. And there are these boxes of actors, but there are these other boxes that we could create with scenery and set design and stuff like that. That maybe we should collaborate a little bit and see how to take the Pink Hulk play and use the benefit of other actors interacting with one another and set design. Mm -hmm. That's know? kind of a cool and, concept for him, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's something that, that really w is worth looking into. And also mm -hmm. the use of music, do you have music in your, I, the irony is that I actually sing a little bit. Um, we were talking, and Jen, I can completely relate because wait till you, you'll be like, oh, I I get it, you know, with with your the audition. I I had been in the original reading of You're in Town. Oh, and wow. had to drop out because I had to start chemo uh, a, a few couple of days before the show. Oh, so so I sing a little bit and I got the blessing from Greg and Mark. They're wonderful. The, oh. the, the lyricist, librettist. And, um, and I sing a snippet of it as if it were the song that I never got to sing. Oh, oh, that's that's great. Great. oh my God. But, uh, but, but in a happy way, you know, because, yeah. uh, you know, I, I'm alive to be able to sing. Right. Exactly. 
So, how, um, so uh, how is your mom? Your mom and dad are both alive, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, my mom, you get to see um, them? my parents are, in, I'm sorry. You get oh. to see them often? I, uh, with the, with going on in the world and us being right. the epicenter, uh, I, I'm going to, as soon as, as soon as we can, I'm seeing them. I'm right. very close with them. I talk with them every night in FaceTime. Oh, beautiful. Uh, oh, that's great. You know, they must uh, be over the moon about you. They, they're the best. I mean, I'm so lucky to have them and, and they really very supportive. They were very afraid at first. Mm -hmm because they thought I was taking on too much. And I remember when I started doing the show, my mom's like, well, maybe you could look into getting an understudy, you know? And I was like, no mom, I'm gonna do it. Well, maybe you should do it in rep with someone, another actor, or you know, we could get this too soon. And so I was like, mom, you're naysaying me. Right, you know, right, parents right. are always parents, no matter how old you are. But it yeah. was only because she was worried about my health yeah. and I love her for that. How and about your children. siblings? You have wood? You you have siblings? I do. I have two older sisters, and they oh, nice. they've, they've been really wonderful and, and and helping. And I have wonderful friends and doctors, and they they've all been helping me so much. And you know, I had a a a, a Valerie victory party after the second one, and, and parties and celebrations. And in fact, when I got my when I was losing my hair the second time, mm -hmm. I ended up having a sh head shaving birthday party oh. at the show. Oh. and a year later they brought back the locks of hair that, oh, that they really? had when, when my head got shaved so oh, uh so yeah. i just i have really great supportive friends so we we make a party out of everything you know <laughs> So, um, so I've been very lucky and my sisters, uh, have been with me with treatment and, uh, they, they all came to see the show, uh, in March when I revealed when I had the second ending of when I had cancer and now I, and then I had to change the story again because the yep. metastatic is, there's no trace of it. So I'm very lucky that I'm, um, wow, what I'm, a wonderful, yeah, so, that's yeah. really amazing. What a wonderful. Yeah. Has yeah, anyone spoken to you about a film? Uh, yes, they have talked about more of a documentary, um, and then maybe filming the pink cult. But I'd like to, I'd like to pursue that because it's okay. changed and grown so much, and I've changed. I mean, right. I, 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 I've got cancer a sec, a third time while I was doing the show, so, uh, so I, I definitely want to do some more. And I, but I, I've been doing a lot of motivational workshops. Um, this Saturday, I'm going to be one of the featured presenters at the weekend of hope in stowe vermont oh, uh wow. virtually wow. Um, that i'll be doing uh pink hulk excerpts and i'll be doing some improv teaching and things like that with, oh, with that's so wonderful fantastic I'm doing a lot of that and so, that's been and saturday uh um at, at, it was supposed to be in vermont but we're doing yeah. it virtually uh you know in, with vermont but it's the stowe weekend of hope for cancer survivors and patients and i'm very very honored to be a part of that the, th the three of us live in westchester county a little bit north of manhattan right and uh jen is president right still mm -hmm. president of the harrison players and anthony is the director of many of the plays wow. right, you know and set design and all of that for years so Maybe there's a way that we could figure out, you know, when things are lifted, that we can yeah, do some totally. kind of, and I want, my, I want kidding? to get yeah, somehow wonderful. a collaborative kind of thing, you know? I love that. yes. And, and even if it's a lot of it is a talk back with the, mm -hmm. with the uh, community, you know, yes. it could be really great. Uh, we're going to close it, close I it up now. And yeah. And I want to really thank you so much, Valerie. It was so fantastic to meet you. Very Did fortunate it. to get Anthony and then Anthony to mention Jen and then Jen, Jen. To come in so cool. on the, you know, <laughs> and uh, oh my God, it was you got me right out of the kitchen. That was awesome. Actually, <laughs> I'm so glad to see Jen's face. Yeah. I haven't seen it since March. Wow. And wow. that's very unusual for wow. us. I know, I know. There's Usually no excuse for that. You two yeah. could go on boom, a Zoom all the time. You know what I mean? You got Maybe we should go on boom. <laughs> boom. <laughs> like you said. <laughs>
Well, I, I want to say thank you, and it, it, uh, and I feel like I already know you guys. I, I feel the yeah. same way. Yeah, exactly. hey, like, let's so cool when we meet exactly. up. We're, yeah. all, we're all the same, you know? Yeah, and I can't thank you enough. It's such an honor uh, to meet so all of you. you. And, and you, should want, you should look at Jen's blog. I will. I, I will, and, and I will, too. And I, we have to shout out to Bob Ost of True. Because yes, because for that, we got connected, yes. That, that uh, um, arts zoom call that's where we got that's connected right. that's where we that's got connected cool. and art and bob has put together a, a zoom friday program every friday at 4 30 everyone's invited so jen and anthony you could come on it as well you don't have to actually be a member of true stands for theater resources unlimited it's a oh. great organization of directors writers a lot of them playwrights but also mm -hmm. some screenwriters and um actors wonderful, Directors, wonderful group. yeah producers wonderful group. producers producers yeah a lot of producers a lot of broadway producers too and um and they're a great they're a great organization and so he set up these uh, zoom meetings and that's how we we met on that zoom meeting exactly. and i'll let him know that because i'll see him on on a zoom meeting on friday night you know and exactly and hopefully we'll all see each other that that yes yes yes, totally. yes and we'll that has to happen we'll see in touch maybe, maybe yes we'll touch each other right, uh, exactly. let's yes. do it now let's high five that's, we that's, can do a, a zoom high five <laughs> yeah. all right all right thanks very much thank you thanks, Paul. Fran. So, take love care you. Good, night, Fran. Fran. good night good night everyone thanks everyone uh, take care, everyone. Bye, bye bye. The Pink Hulk, Pink Hulk, Pink Hulk, Hulk play. Play. Yeah, Pink Hulk Pink Play. Yeah, Yeah, Yes. Right. And your, your blog that. name, Jen. The blog name again. Our daily, our daily feels .com. I'm the feisty warrior. Oh, I love it. I'm a feisty no, warrior. Wait to read it. Oh, our daily feels .com. And, Anthony, good. and Anthony Valviro yeah. at gmail.com. And I'm at transfrancisco.com. Yeah. All right. And uh, Ants Rants. You can go to Ants Rants. Yeah, on Facebook, right? On Facebook. And, oh, Ants Rants. A -N -T -S yes. Oh, please. A -N -T -S. Also, you on, on, <laughs> um, and God. Also on literally on um, I should mention on uh, YouTube. There's parts of my one man show as well. Oh, oh good. Please. Yeah. Good. Very Under good. Our Lady of Familia, I believe. Yes. All right, and for me, and you the, clips are in the works for the Pink Hulk. Uh, so from what you say, you know, what, what'd you say? For the Pink, uh, Hulk? Pink Hulk, some uh, updated clips are in the works. Oh, so. great, good. very good. All right, thank yes. you. And I'm gonna, by the way, I'm gonna post this up on my site and then send great. Okay, a recording of this. Okay, okay great. All right. Okay, bye. Bye, 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 bye,